Hello my wonderful viewers and welcome to another episode of Betty Adams Overanalyzes. Today we're going to take a look at chapter 9 of Doron Dororon. As usual there will be a spoiler free section at first then we'll get into the spoilers. So this chapter is an excellent example of how you can work within a very predictable medium because after all this is a shonen jump fighting manga aimed at a slightly younger demographic. There are not going to be many true subversions of the tropes here. This is going to be a straightforward fighting shonen manga. Now, we've in the past few chapters, we've been building up to this fight with this super powerful Mononoke, the one that was responsible for the trauma in both of our main characters, main human characters' lives. And as far as we know, not in our main Mononoke characters' lives, but it's possible. So we have our mid-ranked samurai and our free and our su super-powered but inexperienced freelancer here. And the freelancer, our Dora, he's just gotten over a major emotional blockage to be useful in this fight. And they're facing the big bad Mononoke. Now, as you build up to a confrontation like this, the question remains, this creature, it's just been designed. I'm sure the artist doesn't want to waste them. Now, is this creature going, or is this combatant, this antagonist, going to hang around and be a long a longer running, uh, frequently occurring antagonist, getting more powerful as the main character gets more powerful? Or is it going to be a one and done, this creature dies with, with this chapter? And that was the question we were looking at as we went into this chapter, and there are multiple different ways that this can be handled. Now, as I said, there aren't a terrible, greatly great number of ways you can go with this because after all this is a shonen manga either this mononoke gets killed and gets replaced with another mononoke another threat or this mononoke survives and continues on and then of course but there are a few corkscrew plot twists that we can make within this dynamic and this chapter just show it shows a very decent way of how to do this the chapter is not shocking it's not terribly surprising but we do go off in a direction that we weren't probably weren't expecting from the previous chapter and this really goes to illustrate what I think is a very important concept. You don't need to be constantly striving to be original. We tell the same stories over and over again for a good reason, because they're good stories. And what you need to do is to do what this mangaka has done. Focus on the technical aspects. Make your art good. Make your storytelling good. Tell the story well. And don't worry about originality. This st manga, this story is starting to have its own feeling. It's starting, each chapter is starting to feel more and more like a chapter of Doron Dororon, not like anything else. And that is the best sort of originality that you're going to get. So even when you're, tra even when you feel trapped within the bounds of the genre that you're writing in, don't. Just focus on telling a good story. Don't worry about being original. Focus on telling a good story and originality will come as a secondary element. So now that was that was done for the spoiler free broader storytelling perspective. Let's get started on what this chapter was about. We are eliminating the previous big bad, the source of trauma, the source of ever uh, of uh, Do Dora's orphan status and the driving force be behind Ginyu's or Ginyu's had Brian Samurai Girl's uh, career advancement. So what happens here? They, they've they defeated the spider bull. It's still thrashing. It's not entirely dead yet, but Kusanagi assures Dora that its supernatural energy is dissipating and it won't last long. But then... But then we rip open this, there is a metaphorical and visual as well as literal something that happens here. So a pair of fingers burst out of the spider and we open it up to see a world beyond the world that we've experienced. Now, they said that these Mononoke just showed up, but the story hasn't dealt with where they came from. Now... With this panel on page, let's see, it's on page three, 
we get a peek into where these Mononoke come from. There's an entire another world, another dimension where these Mononoke come from. And in this other dimension, there is an entire Mononoke culture with different levels of Mononoke. And we get a peek at that culture and at that world through a hyper-powered Mononoke who shows up. And this Mononoke is different from the others. It doesn't just speak, it's humanoid, and it's super, super powerful. And this is hardly a new trope. I mean, I bet you can, off the top of your head, think of a dozen other manga where this happens. But the art, the style, the writing, it's distinct enough that, again, this feels like a chapter of Doron, Doron, and nothing else. And so we have our main characters reacting. Samurai Girl is both shocked but still analyzing. You can see that Dora, the kid, he is responding to it based on... Okay, so both Dora and the Samurai Girl are responding to this. And you can tell that the Samurai Girl already sees and understands this as a threat and she's processing this situation as a Samurai. What is the threat? How do we stop this? Dora is just kind of floored by the situation, and so he reverts to the training that he's received to be polite, to be courteous, and he's treating this, this Mononoke as a person because that is how he was raised. If you see somebody, you treat them politely. But primarily, this is just Dora being completely floored by the situation and just basically reverting to his uh, base coding, as it were, and not really analyzing this tactically until it gets dangerous and he has, has someone to defend. And again, Dora is still very much the youngster, the... Um, inexperienced rookie who's reacting on instinct. And this might be good or bad depending on what the situation is. Then, of course, things go down, people start throwing hands, and we get a big confrontation between the new Mononoke and, uh, and our heroes, which is, of course, interrupted by a higher-ranking samurai officer, a who manages to come in and whack this new Mononoke a good one. So, again, nothing shocking, just a very well done chapter. And I really, really like the plot twists. The, the element of it that makes it good, that takes it up a level, is that we're not just given a more powerful Mononoke for the protagonist to level up against. Just like in a previous chapter where we meet a new Mononoke, they need to stop and think and react to a new situation when they had to fan away the eyeballs. In this case, they're going to have to stop and think again because things have been revealed. We don't just get a new Mononoke. We get an entire Mononoke world. We get an entire Mononoke culture. We get a source of where these Mononoke are coming from, which opens up different possibilities. Can they cut the Mononoke off from coming to the human world in the first place? Can't There's clearly not an open flow of Mononoke coming through from this other world. Maybe there's a way that they can blockade the human world to keep it safe. May, maybe there's a way to communicate with the Mononoke on the other side. That was Dora's first instinct. He's like, hey, maybe I can talk to this guy. Maybe we don't have to fight. So, in offering us this peek into the greater Mononoke world, they've offered us a field of contest, a field of striving, where it doesn't necessarily have to be bare knuckles brawling. This is a challenge that Dora and Kusanagi might be able to meet through diplomacy, through physic physically restricting how the Mononoke can get through. There's a world of possibilities here, and it's going to be fascinating to see how the sto story progresses from here. This chapter didn't just leave me with a nice adrenaline buzz from the combat scene, it left me with questions. I want to see the next chapter because I'm curious about where this is going. So, what do you think? Are you curious to see the next chapter? Do you think this manga has going to have the legs to keep going? I, for one, hope it is. So, leave, hit that like and subs hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment telling me what you thought of this chapter. And peace out, my wonderful viewers.
humans are weird. We took a vote, and humans are weird. I have the data. Two books in a series of human absurdity. Go check out these short story collections. What will our little green friends think of us when we finally do make it to space? Find out the answer in two books of human absurdity. Humans are weird, we took a vote, and humans are weird, I have the data. Available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kobo and Google Play.